here's how I scored the lowest PSLE score in my class. So when I was in primary 6, this was back when there were still PSLE scores. I think now there isn't such a thing, they removed that. But I scored the lowest in my class because I was addicted to playing a phone game. And that game was Grotopia. It's not a great game, so don't even try playing it, it's a waste of your time. But it caused me to get distracted, and because I was so distracted, I definitely wasted the potential that I had, because I could have gotten much, much higher, for sure. But I disappointed everyone, and myself, most importantly. See, I was in Gifted Education Program, GB class, and you know, they always tell you, oh, like, you guys are like the top 1% in the country, and so there was so much expectation and pressure from teachers and parents and my classmates that I was going to do very well. So the expected score was something like 265 to 275. That makes any sense. I don't know whether you guys like are in touch with that kind of score now, but it was high expectations and I totally failed all of those expectations. I'm trying to tell you this because I know that many of you are addicted or maybe you don't like that word, but you know you're spending too much time on things like games, Netflix or similar things like Disney Plus, watching shows, right? Or YouTube. It's like so easy to get sucked into that other world and we waste so much of our time and our precious lives away. And so for me, I learned that lesson much earlier on, but I guess I haven't completely learned it even back then because I still was wasting a lot of time on you know shows, YouTube, games, even after that. Um, but I hope that this video here will help you to understand why you are so easily sucked in. And I hope that that self-awareness will help you eventually reduce your use of those things and help you to get your time back and start living. See, many of you are suffering from this, right? Because we are human. It's not your fault for being human and for being so easily targeted. You see, if I was running those companies like Netflix or if I was the game provider, I will do everything in my power. I will use every psychological trick I had to get you hooked and to stay on my game so that you play as much as possible, there'll be more people playing and spending money on the game. Don't feel bad that you are susceptible to these. Just be aware of it. You are human. If you were stabbed by a knife and I wouldn't say, hey, why are you so weak? Why is your skin so weak? Why can't you block the knife attack with your skin? Why is your skin so weak and, and thin? I wouldn't say that because anyone would have been stabbed the same way, right? It's a knife and we are made of flesh and blood. It's no shame to admit that we are easily susceptible to these things, but we just have to be aware that they are using every cycle psychological trick and weapon in the book to keep you addicted. And why are we actually doing this? Because we are running away. We are escaping something. We are always escaping something. And that's the chaos in our life. We are drowning out the chaos and the problems in our life. We're escaping to a better place because even if you're watching a very chaotic drama, you know that everything is going to resolve in the end. You know that, okay, this is like a wild roller coaster ride and it's fun and there's a lot of dopamine release. But in the end, it's another world. It's a better world than the one that you are in because that world doesn't have your problems. Right, so you want to go there and you want to immerse yourself in that other world and it is escapism, right? We are all trying to escape the problems because we don't want to deal with them. There's so much to think about, so much work to do and stuff. What are the problems you are, are you escaping? What are the problems that you are escaping? There are things you are unhappy about. There are things that I am unhappy about. Right? It could be very simple things like right now my table is in a mess. There are many things lying around and I know that near the end of today, I will fix most of if not all of it. And maybe you are unhappy that you're not waking up on time, that you want to wake up even if it's in the holidays. You want to wake up at maybe 9 a.m. But you end up waking up at 1 p.m. And that's because you are not sleeping on time. You want to sleep at 12 p.m. or earlier, but you end up sleeping at 3 a.m. So all these small things throughout the whole day, and it just happens over the weeks and months, right? Our life is in chaos. And we feel there are so many things that I'm unhappy about. They're not getting fixed. This life, this reality is disappointing. As Thanos says, right? Reality is often disappointing. And so I think that's the main reason that we are so susceptible to these things, like wasting many hours of our time in games, in TikTok, scrolling mindlessly, YouTube, Netflix. It's because it's a better world than the reality that you are in right now. What are those things? Is it that maybe you're eating too much? You're exercising too little? You're unhappy with who you are? You're unhappy with yourself? You are not perfectly happy with the relationships you have, like with your family members or with your friends. You know that you're supposed to be friends, but there are certain things between you guys, maybe that are not completely set, and maybe you feel like people don't like you enough. There are many, many things like these, and we all want to avoid those emotions, avoid those negative feelings and disappointments, and so we escape. But it's like painkillers, right? Pain Painkillers are quite useless if you think about it in terms of treating the problem. You can take painkillers, but it will not solve the root cause of your pain. It just numbs the pain. It just helps you escape. Three years ago, around May, I injured my back quite badly, and that injury has still not fully healed. But for a year or so, I did go to see some doctors, and they gave me painkillers. I did take the painkillers for a while, and what it did was, yeah, it really just numbed the pain, so it was less painful, but I would still be doing the same things that hurt my back. Like, example, every time I curved my back, right, and if I sit like that with bad posture, it would hurt the, the injury more. But with the painkiller, I didn't know that. I was just doing the bad posture and it was actually hurting myself. Okay, but I was escaping 
and avoiding the pain, not solving the problem. And so when I stop taking the painkiller, like the next day when the effects wear off, I feel the pain again. So you have to take more, right? You have to take it again. So eventually I got frustrated with that because it wasn't solving the problem. So I stopped very quickly and I started working on actually healing my back, doing the work, exercises, strengthening it, and it has improved a lot more. And I know it will continue to improve and eventually I will be able to get rid of the problem. But you know that the solution did not come with escaping the pain. It did not come with escaping the reality. It came with facing the reality and saying, yeah, this sucks. My life and my reality is disappointing. I have two choices. I can deny it and escape and temporarily feel better. But then very quickly, I know that it's the, the bad feelings, feelings are going to come back. Or I can face the reality head on and solve the problem, even though I know it's going to take a lot of time and work. But eventually, it will lead me to a better life. And at least that life is real. At least that life matters. We spend hours, hundreds and thousands of hours, especially those who are super like hardcore into some games. They would brag about how many thousands of hours they spend on that game. Because I think in certain gaming apps like Steam, right, they have a count of how many hours you play. And so people would brag about that and say like oh you don't have this amount of hours and then they will compete but think about that it was so many hours that were taken from their real life into a virtual world with yes there may be tons of achievements and things like that but in terms of priority and like how much it really matters in the grand scale of your life it's like right at the bottom because you can brag about oh i have so many achievements in this virtual thing okay maybe if you're a pro gamer and you make a living of it then maybe it's higher up in priorities right but come on we are not like that most of us are not like that these addictions and these time stealers because that's what they are they steal your time actually no they're life stealers they steal your life so you know in certain games like i used to play this game called shadow fight and one of the power-ups right or like enchantments you can have is life steal so if you hit the enemy and the power gets activated it drains their life and you get it all right so it's quite a cool power up but that's exactly what the games are doing to you they're stealing your life and your energy and time and then the games are profiting and the companies are growing now it's actually good i don't have anything against these things i think that entertainment and companies and technology is great but it's not great when your life gets stolen and your energy like you only have a finite number of years maybe by the time you are old technology is so much better and let's say life expectancy is 100 years old. So you have 100 years, right? But if you spend a few thousand hours playing a certain game, those are days and months that have been minus off from your life span. And they're gone forever. And you use it on something so low priority, something that doesn't exist. And so yeah, just realize what these are, that they're stealing your life, your energy, your dreams. They are stealing your dreams, by the way, because you can't work towards your goal if you're working towards a goal in a virtual world, or if you're too busy living a dream of being in another universe in a TV show. And so you want to know what uh, PSI score I got in the end? I remember it was the day of the release of the result. Okay, and we were all back in school in the classroom our form teachers in the front you know she's saying blah 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 and she's saying like oh you guys did quite well and you know so i got my hopes up a bit and then she said okay so she's announced the first in class first and i still remember the guy I still remember his name i think got 273 or 275 something like that pretty high and like you know i was like wow it's pretty good um then she called up the rest of us but in descending order so she called the first in class the highest scorer then going down the list and then my name wasn't called for really long and i was starting to get worried after like three quarters of the class has been called i'm like in the bottom 25 percent for sure then she stopped announcing the names because it was was getting too low so she don't want to embarrass you right she just called your name and she didn't announce the score then it turns out when i opened the thing i got 251 251 might not seem low to you in fact to some of you it's like wow that's pretty high but remember the expectation and remember the circumstances i had so i was expected to get much higher than that so it was a disappointment disappointment to everyone and when when i got the score actually i tied for last place with three other people in my class the four of us we all got the same score we all were the last in class and she called the three people up to the front to give them a pep talk because of their score and so i was quite curious because I also had the same score. Why is she not calling me up there? And then when I went to ask her, she said, oh, because you have DSA. So I opened the DSA acceptance offer. Turns out that I got accepted into a waiting list to RI. I went for a DSA interview based on academics because I was in GP a few months ago before that exam, PSLE exam. And they gave me the offer of waiting list. They didn't say, okay, you're accepted. It wasn't a confirmed thing. But now after the results got released, then they said accepted. So think about how lucky I got because I could have very easily not been accepted. I did not have any other acceptance, by the way, to other schools. Hua Chong, DSA interview straight up rejected me I think <laughs> and NUS high I think also something like that happened RI was the only one I had plus it was waiting list and so it's not confirmed so you see how lucky I got if not for that acceptance if other people you know were in front of me in the waiting list and I could just have easily as not been accepted because there were other people who got accepted first right in the waiting list um, it was extremely lucky and I think that was like a second chance to prove myself that I do have immense potential that even though I may not be a genius and I felt like one of the dumbest people in RI most of the time but I'm still extremely capable and competent and that I can do anything I want if I put enough time, effort, energy. And I think every human has the ability because you all have the ability to improve and change. So all of you have that as well. And I guess it's just
just a matter of do you want to prove it to anyone? Do you want to prove it to yourself to show that to show the world to show other people around you that you are not lazy, that you are not someone who wastes their potential, and that you actually do have what it takes, and that you are disciplined, you are mentally resilient, and you do work hard and you do achieve results. So it's a lot more than just academics for the sake of looking good. It's a lot more about our own character, and、uh, that's something that you always carry around, no matter what's taken away from you. I hope that you learn from my mistakes and remember that these addictions they are killing you slowly because they are stealing away your life and your energy. Learn from my mistakes and don't do what I did.